welcome back to episode four of the Project 3030, a 10K series where I'm training for the Vitality 10K, which is in two and a half weeks time upon recording of this video. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to Saw Running, who are the sponsors of this series. Uh, I'm going to be using some of the kit today in the workout. In today's video, I'm going to go over everything I eat in a day, probably the most requested video here on the channel. Um, so I've just got all my breakfast, my supplements, um, and I'm talk going to talk you through it in just a minute. So in today's video, I'm going to go through everything I eat. I'm currently running around 100 miles, 110 miles a week. I do just want to preface this vlog and say running has never been about weight loss for me. Um, I've never had a weight loss journey with running um, and I do get quite a lot of questions from people about how to lose weight through running um, but it's not really my area of expertise having not gone through that myself. And so this is just the, the food that I use to fuel my training uh, and I'll try to talk you through it uh, as best I can. So we start off with drinks that I have in the morning. So I start the day with a cup of tea. Uh, yesterday was my birthday, so I just had a little bit of birthday cake as well. Um, just a small slice to start the day, um, why not? Um, and I've also got a coffee here. So I go for a flat white, um, double espresso with whole milk, um, just because it froths better for <coughs> latte art. In terms of my actual breakfast, I've got some porridge that I just made. Uh, and I like to put um, some maple syrup on there. I usually have blueberries as well, or raspberries, or whatever fruit I can find, to be honest with you. But I just looked in the fridge, and the blueberries are definitely mouldy. So skip those today. I'm definitely going to need a spoon to eat that. I also uh, am planning to do a session this morning um, at 10 o'clock. It's now about half eight, so about an hour and a half before I start my session. Um, so I want to stay hydrated. It's about 30 degrees here in the UK today, so it's going to be a warm one. Um, the hydration tablets that I've used for probably about two or three years now are from, from a company called Bix. Um, these are just active electrolytes. Just dissolve into a drink like this, um, and I usually take those before, after, and pretty much throughout the day, to be honest with you. Go through probably two tablets. Uh, a day on average, maybe sometimes three if it's warmer weather, sometimes I forget and I don't take any at all. On to the supplements, now I'm not going to go into um, full detail on each individual supplement as to why I take them, um, if you want to do your own research then that's absolutely fine. Um, so quite a lot of pills here in the assortment, I've got the uh, CBD and turmeric capsules, um, which I take two of them every morning, uh, I've got two capsules of cordyceps, uh, I think I've only got two left there, so I need to get some more. Um, Cordyceps mushrooms. I also have recently started taking this one called Total Bone. Uh, it's basically just calcium, um, and I just find uh, that's for sort of bone strength and health with high mileage. I don't want to risk things like shin splints. Uh, and I also have a vitamin C tablet here as well, which I haven't got out of the cupboard. Um, but yeah, that's my breakfast. I'm going to get through this now. So I've got some electrolytes, coffee, porridge, usually would have some fruit and my supplements, and that usually kickstarts my day. All right, time to eat. session is uh, my Thursday session so it's around my 10k pace on Tuesdays I sort of do an above speed session so we did 800 meter reps uh, down on the track um, a really good session actually it was two sets of 4x800 um, and my last 800 was 206 so I was really chuffed with that in terms of getting the speed work in for the day um, but this morning session is uh, going to be more at 10k pace so we're going to do six by a mile or 1600 meters um, uh, around my 10k pace, maybe a little bit slower because it is quite hot today. Um, so we're going to do five reps at, at 10k pace and then that last rep I'm going to push on a little bit um, just to push on as if I was at the end of the race. Um, so hopefully it'll be close to 5k pace for the last mile rep. So six by a mile or 1600 meters um, and we're going to be doing this on a nice little flat loop that we have here in Essex. Um, I'm going to be doing it with Zach, my teammate. Uh, from Chelmsford who's pretty much run identical PBs across 5k uh, and 10k so it'll be good to jump in with him it's always nice to have a bit of company um, but I'm gonna head down to the loop now and uh, get started with Zach so 
three, two, one, let's go. So I just finished the last rep. Uh, Jack, um, Zach, sorry, decided to call it at five. Um, but I managed to push on for the last one. Picked it up a little bit, and I think I averaged three minutes per K for that one, which is exactly what I was aiming for, but I really had to dig deep, and dig, dig deep in that last 600. Just sort of trying to imagine that I was coming into the last kilometer of the 10K and just really giving it everything all the way up until when my watch stopped. So yeah, solid session. Uh, 57 minutes of running so far. How far have we run? 14 kilometers thus far, and probably about three or four K warm down. So about 18 kilometers for the day. Solid start. And we got another easy run later this evening. Right, watch is beeping. Time to start the cool down. Whew, this is gonna be a shuffle. So I just finished the session, absolutely drifting in sweat. Um, I was wearing one of these beautiful saw singlets this morning. Um, these are what I'm going to be racing the Vitality 10K in. Super breathable, as you can see. Um, you can literally see through these, they're so good. They are a little bit more expensive, but these are the most premium um, vest I've tried. A little fun fact is that I'm actually planning to get this tattooed on the back of my, well, on my arm actually, this track design. Um, it's by a French brand called uh, Jolie Foley, which is a running brand in, uh, running club in Paris. Um, and I saw the logo when I was out there and just thought, how cool is that? It's like a track. It's got a bit of like a, a wave design through it. Um, so I'm planning to get that tattooed on my arm um, at some point. If you want to check out anything from Saw, you can get 15% off using BIR15. I've now changed into one of their training t-shirts because this one is a little bit on the damp side after that hot session. It's now 31 degrees according to the car. Um, but let me just jump on to the chorus app and quickly talk you through the workout. Um, overall, pretty good this morning. Um, I didn't feel great at the moment, um, mainly because of the amount of miles I've run recently. Um, I'm sort of in the peak of my uh, training block and then planning to taper down in the next few weeks. So. Um, yeah, 18 kilometers, as you can see here, average pace 418. So I did the warm up and cool down, did 4K warm up and 4K cool down in the Cloud Stratus, which was just an easy run shoe. Then I changed into the Vaporflies, the Alpha Fly, sorry, the shoes I wore for uh, my first ever marathon, actually, Copenhagen Marathon back in 2020. Two or 2023? Yeah, 2022, not that long ago. They feel really great still. I'll just talk you through the reps if we come down here. So we started off fairly conservatively, uh, 5.11 for the first K, which is 3.15 per kilometer. Then 5.02, Zach took that rep. So we sort of settled into the, around this pace after that. So 3.09 per K, then 5.06, 3.11 per K, then 5.04, 3.10 per K, and then five minutes, 3.09, uh, and that is when Zach tapped out. He is just coming back from uh, an injury. So he's sort of building back fitness. So he's um, cautious not to overdo it. Um, whereas I'm trying to gain as much fitness as I can over these workouts. So I pushed on for the sixth rep and I hit a 448 for the 1600 meters, just short of a mile. Uh, average three minutes per kilometer. Uh, and overall, the way I finished the workout, I was pretty happy with it. I was working pretty damn hard to run three minutes per K average pace towards the end. And I'm hoping with a taper, um, and a few more weeks of training, that should feel a little bit more comfortable come race day. But yeah, 18 kilometers to start the day. In terms of fuel, um, I've just had a bottle of electrolytes. Again, so the second electrolyte tablet of the day. This is now um, run out. Gonna get back to the house, get some more water on board, more hydration, and um, yeah, talk you through what I eat for lunch at the moment. But without further ado, let's hit the road and get some lunch in me, because I'm starving. So I just got back from my session and it's now 12.30, which is typically around when I have my lunch. Um, so I get my first training uh, session done in the morning. Uh, I'll get back to the house, make sure I uh, replace the electrolytes straight away, and then I'll have my lunch. Um, when it comes to lunches, I cheat a little bit. Um, I often don't have time to, to cook something nutritious and healthy. Um, so I partnered up with a company called Simmer Eats. Um, so today I've got Lebanese lamb hashu. Uh, you just chuck it in the microwave for four minutes. Uh, and in terms of 
what's in it. Um, I've got 461 calories, uh, 40 grams of protein, 43 grams of carbs, and 14 grams of fat. And my deal with this company is basically they send me these for free. So um, without being too um, biased, and they send me them for free in exchange for a bit of um, content um, in the company called Simmer Eats, based in London. And as you can see on the packaging here, this is the, the family that run it. So it's a mum and two um, sons called Simi, Jai and their mother. Um, and they make these meals in London and then ship them out every Monday. I get five meals um, and then just heat them up like that. So today I've gone for a bit of a side salad as well. I've got um, some peppers some tomatoes, red onion, and just uh, iceberg lettuce. I chopped up, had it in the fridge already. Um, but yeah, that's my lunch, typical lunch. Um, it's really good because I can just chuck it in the microwave four minutes and I'm there. I'm pretty fortunate that I get uh, sent these for free, um, but it just means that I can get some, some decent calories in me and some nutritious food straight after a run. And I always try to get my food in within that 30 minute window. So I think, yeah, it's probably been a little bit longer today, probably 40 minutes since I finished my run, but um, yeah, just gonna scoff this. Also, got a Coke Zero. These are a bit of my uh, guilty pleasure. I probably have a Coke Zero every day at the moment. Probably should be cutting that out as somebody who's who aspires to be an elite level athlete. But um, yeah, I think Coke Zero is not gonna do me too much harm. I try to stick away from uh, the sugary stuff. Um, so there's no fats, sugars, anything in there. But obviously you've still got a few of the nasties of Coke. But you know, you've gotta have some luxuries in life. Um, so I'm just gonna scoff this put my feet up and then get ready to go for a bit of an easy run this evening slash this afternoon. So I'm just out for my second run, uh, six kilometers this afternoon, nice and easy, more of a recovery pace. But I was just thinking to myself, uh, about this video, what I eat in a day. And like, to be honest with you, I'm a little bit confused as to why people almost care. Like, why do people wanna know what I eat in a day? Um, I just find it a little bit odd. But anyway, I thought I would just try and describe uh, or explain my uh, diet or my relationship with food. Again, that term to me sounds like I've got an eating disorder or uh, something like that. And I guess it's probably why I haven't chosen to talk about food, diet, that much here on the channel in the last sort of two or three years of me documenting my running here on YouTube. Um, but I'll share a little bit about my approach to, to food, to eating. Um, and I'm very much a person who consumes food as fuel like when I'm in high training like I am today and I have been for the last sort of month, two months, I see food as fuel. So I will typically eat something quite carbohydrate rich in the morning, like porridge, um, to see me through my morning session. At lunchtime, again, I'll make sure I have plenty of carbs, but add in some vegetables uh, and also a good amount of protein around I don't know, 20 to 40 grams of protein at lunchtime, just to kickstart the recovery after the morning session. And then this evening, again, I'll have something similar to what I eat at lunchtime. Good amount of carbs, good amount of veg, and uh, some protein. I don't really monitor what I eat. I don't really limit myself. Over the last couple of years, I definitely have cut out uh, some of my bad snacking habits that I had. So I used to typically go down to the co-op or the nearest shop and see what was in the reduced section. There'd always be some sort of donuts at the end of the day. Uh, I don't know, 60, 70p. I'd buy the, the four pack and I'd probably end up eating three, if not all of them, uh, just in the evening, just for a bit of a snack. Um, whenever I buy sweets and chocolate, I'm one of those people that can't just take like a couple of pieces of chocolate and then put the rest in the cupboard. I'll just demolish the whole thing. So for me, uh, in order to cut out my bad snacking habits, I just have to say no full stop basically. So I don't really eat sweets and chocolate uh, very occasionally, probably like once a week I'll have a chocolate bar. Uh, and alcohol, I guess is the other topic. Um, again, 
I found that when I drink alcohol, the next day when I train, I feel like, to be honest with you, I'm sure you can probably relate. So again, purely from performance, wanting to be an elite level athlete, I've also cut out alcohol pretty much um, altogether. I still drink a little bit. So for example, last night was my birthday, had a barbecue with some friends and I had a couple of beers. Like I'm not gonna limit myself to just having a few casual ones every now and again. Um, but I certainly don't drink throughout the week. Uh, probably drink maybe once a month in terms of just at social events. So yeah, I guess that explains how I uh, fuel myself, how I approach, approach um, food. When I came back from Kenya, I definitely wanted to like simplify my diet a little bit more. Um, so cut out all the processed foods, um, just try and stick to basic carbohydrates like pasta, rice, um, try and increase the amount of fruit and veg I'm eating. Uh, I eat quite a lot of salad now. Um, weirdly, like tomatoes is one of my favorite foods, but this time last year I couldn't eat tomatoes at all. Um, I didn't like them, but now having sort of made myself, I guess, clean up my diet a little bit. And I've talked about this a little bit on the podcast. I sort of eat a lot less these days. So I hope that sort of offers you a little bit more of an insight of how I uh, feed myself, fuel myself, three meals a day, try to cut the snack in uh, and stay hydrated throughout with water, tea, coffee, and the odd Coke here and there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that was a long one. A long little rant. I've nearly talked for a kilometre there, so I've only got a couple of K left, and then it's time for dinner. So I just cooked up my last meal of the day. Um, it's a bit of a leftovers dinner. Um, last night I had a barbecue, so I wanted to use up some of the stuff we had left over. Um, so we had some peppers, some courgettes, and some red onions left over. So I just fried those in the pan, and um, then I've put chopped tomatoes, smoked paprika, uh, mixed herbs and some chili powder and then I've thrown in the leftover sausages from the barbecue as well um, with pasta or spaghetti so yeah that's dinner for tonight um, last meal is now at around 7 30 my girlfriend Meg is on her way back from London and um, so I've made her dinner as well what a great partner I am um, but we sort of share <laughs> in our household who makes dinner I've also got a coke zero second one of the day um, I didn't want to make a video where I sort of made meals specifically for the video. I wanted it to be a true um, representation of what I eat and drink in a day. So I fancied another Coke Zero, uh, so I'm going to have one. Um, but yeah, that's it for today's video. Uh, if I want a snack in the evening after dinner, I usually have fruit. So I'll go for an apple, a banana, or my favourite is mango. Um, I probably spend too much money on mangoes from the co-op. Um, down the road um, but yeah hope you've enjoyed today's video a look at what I eat whilst training for a 30 minute 10k or a 224 marathon runner whatever you want to call me also just want to say one last thank you to Saw for supporting this series I wouldn't be able to make YouTube videos without sponsors so if you would like to pick up any uh, clothing from Saw across this training block then use BIR15 for 15% off and it honestly is the highest quality, most breathable uh, running apparel that I've ever tried. Um, so if you pick up a piece, I guarantee you will get on well with it. Um, but yeah, until next time, aspire to run, run to inspire. I'm going to eat this dinner. I'll let you know if it is any good. Um, but until next time, goodbye. <laughs>